dear students now we are going to discuss about factors affecting implications of visual impairment age of onset degree of vision type of vision loss prognosis and socio economic status of the family a visual impairment is any visual condition that impacts an individual's ability to successfully complete the activities of everyday life Students with visual impairments are infants, toddlers, children and youths who experience impairments of the visual system that impact their ability to learn. There are various factors impacting visual impairment. The factors may include age of onset of visual impairment, degree and type of vision loss and prognosis which have significant impact on development in addition the socio economic status of the family is affected due to blindness of a person in the family now let us discuss each factor in this lesson age of onset of visual impairment the age of onset blindness or impairment can have a significant effect on the emotional development of individuals First, a congenital impairment forces an almost automatic acceptance of the condition. An adventitious impairment on the other hand is often accompanied by an element of surprise, trauma and depression that requires a certain accommodation period. The shock usually affects the individual and the family and communication between both parties is essential persons with degenerative eye conditions are emotionally upset and their thinking that they will lose vision one day is painful the older the child when the loss of sight occurs the greater will be the emotional and the physical impact longer will be the he take to adjust to living with impaired vision and more support he will need from his family but some researchers argue that being blind from infancy is easier since he does not need to learn to live with a new condition some professionals have compared the onset of blindness to an experience of death and rebirth the sighted person dies and a new person the blind person is born however the new blind person is not a new person and the sighted person is not entirely dead for the blind person carries the memories and feelings of the formerly sighted person he faces a number of losses some or all of which he must grieve megan found that The blind tend to view themselves extremely negative and Bowman observed that the partially sighted have a greater degree of anxiety, insecurity and loneliness. Sachs found that the individual with low vision perceive themselves more negative, expressing feelings of isolation and unjust fault when compared to the blind or sighted. Freeman found that in many cases individuals with low vision tend to reject services that would be beneficial because they did not want to be labeled as blind a classification system exists is based on the advent of the visual impairment itself congenital visual impairment when occurs during fetal development at birth or immediately following birth Visual impairment is present before visual memory has been established. Adventitious visual impairment occurs after having normal vision either through a hereditary condition or trauma or visual memory may remain. Students with congenital visual impairment typically have more difficulty mastering visually oriented concepts such as spatial orientation and many environmental concepts than adventitiously blind due to the presence of visual memory the next factor is the degree of vision and its impact 
vision impairment is a condition that prevents normal vision in one or both eyes there are different degrees of vision impairment from mild loss to total blindness a person's level of vision or sight may remain the same over time or it may change eyesight will get worse due to some conditions such as retinitis pigmentosa and untreated cataracts the amount of vision loss will affect the type of support the child will need at home at school and in the community generally people talk about how much vision has been lost the terms low vision or blindness may be used there are three classification systems for individuals with visual impairment that are used by education professionals to be declared legally blind an individual must have visual acuity of 20 by 200 or less or have a field of vision restricted to 20 degrees or less at the widest point however this classification system is used primarily to determine eligibility for educational and rehabilitation services for example 6 by 60 describes the ability to see objects only at a distance of 6 meters while a normal eye can see the same object at 60 meters normal visual acuity is 6 by 6 that is 20 by 20 in the empirical measure of feet the world health organization defines blindness as a visual acuity of less than 3 by 60 or equivalent for educational purposes a specially trained teacher must determine that the visual impairment impacts the child's ability to learn and this professional determination with the agreement of the individualized education program team ensures access to special education services to implement appropriate classroom accommodations for students with visual impairment these students are also classified according to their level of functional vision which include low vision students use their vision as their primary sensory channel functionally blind students can use limited vision for functional tasks but need their tactile and auditory channels for learning totally blind students use tactile and auditory channels for learning and functional tasks now let us see type of vision loss has its own implication there are literally hundreds of different eye diseases that cause visual impairment the first concept is to consider that every eye disease can be placed in one or more of these three categories of vision loss based on the similarity of functional symptoms they are blurred vision that is overall blurred or hazy vision peripheral field loss that is vision loss at the sides central field loss that is vision loss of the central part the images demonstrates what type of vision loss the low vision persons experience based on the functional symptom the first picture shows the image seen by a person with normal vision the second indicates as image seen by a person with blurred vision this is noted here In the third image only the central part of the image is seen here the person who has lost peripheral vision see in the picture like this there are certain eye conditions causing blurring of vision for example cataract causes blurring of vision and increased sensitivity to glare refractive errors include long sightedness short sightedness and astigmatism cause blurring of vision diabetic retinopathy symptoms include blurring and patchiness in vision central vision loss causes distortion or loss of central vision resulting in difficulties with activities such as reading and recognizing faces
peripheral vision loss it causes tunnel vision resulting in peripheral vision loss but central vision is intact and this vision loss affects safe mobility and driving that is retinitis pigmentosa and glaucoma students with low vision exhibit a wide range of visual impairments teachers should be aware that no two students with low vision have the same functional vision even if they are diagnosed as having the same eye condition and similar vision acuity vision may fluctuate and be influenced by such factors as fatigue light glare lighting condition and time of day therefore special attention must be given in assessing the needs of the student with low vision accommodations can be incorporated into his or her program plan prognosis for person with vision loss in general vision loss does not improve over time there are exceptions such as amblyopia or near sightedness and in such condition the problem will be corrected but vision loss that is present from birth or early childhood particularly when it occurs with other disabilities will usually not get better prompt diagnosis and early treatment are key factors for children with vision problems the treatment interventions depend on the type of vision problem prognosis of vision defects can be identified with some symptoms some of the symptoms and medical treatment options that are used to correct vision defects and minimize loss include eye infections blurred vision amblyopia corrective lenses for strabismus and once macular degeneration now let us see one by one eye infections symptoms may include itchy eye burning of eye or redness of eye antibiotics drugs are used to treat eye infections blurred vision due to near sightedness that is myopia far sightedness that is hyperopia and astigmatism corrective lenses that is glasses or contact lenses are used to treat refractive errors amblyopia can be caused by misalignment of the eyes far sightedness or astigmatism or cataracts if detected and treated at an early stage ideally during the first 2 to 4 years of life amblyopia can be corrected the earlier the treatment is started the faster the recovery if amblyopia is not treated before the age of 8 vision loss may be less responsive to treatment amblyopia is a reduction in vision that happens when the brain disregards the image received from an eye patch therapy is given to correct amblyopia usually doctors disable the healthy stronger eye by putting a patch over it or using eye drops to blur vision this method forces the lazy eye to work thus strengthening its vision it also makes the brain form new connections with that eye rather than the one that it had been relying on if a cataract is present it may require surgery if strabismus is the cause it should be corrected after the vision has been equalized between the eyes corrective lenses for strabismus strabismus is a misalignment of one eye so that its line of vision is not directed at the same point as the other eye it is caused by an imbalance in the muscles that control the eye's position or sometimes by near sighted vision if left untreated Strabismus can lead to amblyopia and possibly permanent vision loss. Strabismus is treated by correcting of any refractive error with glasses and eye patch to equalize vision and in some cases surgery to alter the way the muscles pull the eye. 
how fast one's macular degeneration will progress is a major concern for most people diagnosed with this retinal disease. One person may experience a different rate of progression in their right eye compared to their left eye. It is possible that one eye can have dry age related macular degeneration and the other eye the wet form. There are a number of reasons why a patient's vision may be gradually declining. This can be very worrying for some person. When vision loss is noted, it is important to take a thorough history as the patient's perception of visual impairment. A routine history is mandatory and will often guide to know a possible cause. The person has vision problem may specifically be asked about the nature of the problem, one eye or both eyes problem, whether blurry vision occurs in the whole field when looking close or distance or both. Any difficulties noted while following a moving object or driving or knocking into things at the periphery of vision. Distorted rather than blurred vision. For example, dent in printed words, door or window frames, objects appearing smaller or larger, which may be due to central visual field restriction. Bits of visual field missing altogether, central versus peripheral. Note when the problem occurred and whether there were any significant health issues at that time. Ask how this problem was first noticed. Unilateral visual loss might have gone unnoticed until the person closed the other eye. Ask whether there has been a slow or steady decline, whether there have been stepwise drops in visual acuity or whether the problem has been intermittent. If intermittent, it may be impending acute angle closure glaucoma. Ask whether there have been any associated factors, for example, pain or redness or visual phenomena, for example, halos, flashes of light, new floaters. These symptoms may be indication of eye problems and hence need immediate referral. Ask whether there are any precipitating factors. Specifically ask about changes over the course of a day and whether vision is better in the day or at night. Other important aspects of the history include the past ocular history, medical history, family history, medication and social history. The other factor is visual impairment on socio-economic status of the family. The economic impact of vision loss is also substantial. Blindness found that direct medical expenses, other direct expenses, loss of productivity and other indirect costs for visual disorders are noted across all age groups. Persons with a disability are likely to have limited opportunities to earn income and often have increased medical expenses. Disabilities among children and adults may affect the socio-economic standing of entire families. It is approximated by WHO in 2009 that 45 million people are blind in the world and that 87% of the visually impaired people live in developing countries. Thus, poverty and blindness are believed to be intimately linked with poverty predisposing to blindness and blindness aggravating poverty by limiting employment opportunities or by incurring treatment cost. People who are poor are more likely to become blind due to lack of access and ability to pay for health services and increased susceptibility to eye infections and diseases and lack of awareness about eye health. In addition, clear evidence shows that some blinding eye diseases are a direct consequences of poverty, for example, trachoma, which is a disease of the eye caused by a bacterium. However, 
It is important to realize that blindness may also cause people to become poor. For instance, a review on poverty and its consequences found that although some individuals become disabled because of low income, a staggering 64% of those with the disabilities were not in poverty prior to onset of the disability. Households affected by disability and which were not initially impoverished or poor had three times the probability of entering into poverty within one year of onset of disability compared with unaffected households. Households affected by disability also had a lower probability of leaving poverty because of the increased cost and reduced earnings associated with the disability. Thus, it is evident that disabilities such as blindness may not only be a result of living in poverty, but also may lead an individual or family to become impoverished. The impact of blindness on children and family members. While those who are blind have to deal with substantial devastating consequences, Blindness also impacts family and community members because blindness imposes restrictions on the ability to move about and control self and environment. A high proportion, that is 75% of the visually impaired people require assistance with everyday tasks. In developing countries, most blind adults need to be led by either sighted children or sighted adults. When a child becomes the caretaker, that child is often unable to attend school, thus denying the child an opportunity to escape the poverty cycle. When a sighted adult becomes the caregiver, he or she often needs to stop working. Thus, there are long-term negative impact for economic and education that extend beyond the blind individual. In fact, the social fabric of a community is impacted on a practical level. Sadly, disability is both caused by poverty and causes poverty stated by Holden. To conclude, the actual effect of visual impairment on an individual varies widely depending on the condition such as onset of visual impairment, degree and type of vision loss, progress of the vision condition, and the individual skills. Vision loss has a significant impact on the lives of those who experience it as well as on their families, their friends and society. Thank you for listening.